Perfect. All right. Let's see if the computer works. All righty. So my name is Rafael Fulton Fernandez. I go by he, him. I am from Brazil, as you can see on the flag up there. Uh, I work for Lenovo. Uh, everyone here knows what Lenovo is? All righty, perfect. We do computers and we do servers. We also own Motorola. So if you ever remember Hello Moto, that's from Lenovo too. Uh, I'm a senior global project manager. I've been there for about four years. Now I live in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. And I, I like to include every time we're gonna do these presentations that we're more than a title, we're more than where we're from. We also have passions, we're also people. So I put up there, I, I love to do operations. I love to do project management, but I also love tennis. I play tennis at Penn State Harrisburg. I love running, I love watching sports. And one of these sports is Penn State football. So very excited to be here. My information is gonna be here as well. So if you want to uh, get in touch, feel free to do so, okay? So today on the agenda, we're gonna go over a lot of things. Uh, we're gonna go into as much detail as possible in the time that we have here. Uh, so we're gonna go over some of the pre-research that you have to do when you're trying to find a job, some of the resume and cover letter that we did. Again, remember Penn State has amazing career services. Please use them. Uh, they are free. You don't have to necessarily go on, you can go on Google, but they have people here that can help you. Uh, and that's all for free. We're gonna talk about the career fair. We're gonna talk about some of the things that helped us when we were trying to find a job, and especially as international students, if you haven't realized there are some things that happen with visas. So we're gonna talk about that as well. And, and we have someone here from the DISA officer that is going to be able to hopefully answer a little bit more questions later. Okay, so we're gonna do something to be more interactive. Raise your hand here if... You already have a job lineup after school. If you are in school. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, one person. You completed an internship during school. Okay. Awesome. All righty, increasing oh. the number, that's good. You guys are well prepared. <laughs> Do you have a resume ready? Okay, increasing that as well. <laughs> there are some things about the visa process I don't quite understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. And you are feeling overwhelmed with the job search process. Okay. Okay. Depends. Very good. Even if you haven't raised your hand and you're not overwhelmed, that's good too. Okay. Okay. So when we are talking about the, the job search, and we like to call this the pre-research, are you aware that in, in a couple of weeks, you're going to have a massive career fair at Penn State, one of the biggest career fairs in the country? Everyone aware? When you go into that career fair, you're gonna get a number of companies that are gonna be present. And you're gonna have probably two, three weeks to research about all of these companies. How do you usually do that kind of research, right? Some companies are going to be offering in your field positions that are going to be in Pennsylvania. Some are going to be in New York. Some are going to be in California. What kind of interests do you have? Is it the industry that you want to be in? Is it technology? Is it plumbing? Is it uh, fire systems? Is it uh, industrial? Is it automotive? So what kind of interest do you have? But one of the things I like to mention every time someone is doing a pre-research to find a job is what kind of requirements do you have? A lot of people say, I really want to stay in Pennsylvania. Remember, now that we're moving to a more, I'd say, job remote and hybrid and flexible work environment, it is a little bit easier to say, I only want to do remote. And you can define and decide where you want to live. But a lot of companies are still gonna have a hybrid mode where you need to go to the office. And we don't know what that, that's gonna look like yet. It's gonna be 2022, 2023, but you need to account for what requirements you have. And if you want to have a specific location or if you want to be in a specific part of a company, if you need to be part of a rotational program, everyone knows what a rotational program is? Companies are creating rotational programs to ensure that not only you're increasing your network within the company, but you're also increasing the amount of things you learn about that company. So you're going to spend six months to a year in a, in a position, and then you go another six months to a year to another position. And if this is one of your requirements, you need to make sure that out of the hundreds of companies that are coming here, you're only looking for the rotational program ones. 
So I like to say on your pre-research, when you're looking at the career fair and you're super overwhelmed by the amount of companies, sometimes you don't know the name of all of them. Sometimes you've heard of Apple and Google, but remember everyone is applying for Apple and Google. Everyone is applying for a Microsoft. What other companies are also of your interest? And that could be in the tech field and that could be in the industrial field, automotive field. And then the, the, the two last things are the companies that you're looking for, you need to learn about them. You don't have to necessarily go on an interview. And I like to say, you know, about Lenovo, the example, because I've seen it. People get in an interview, what do you know about Lenovo? You make computers. We making computers is a fact, but what else do you know about us? What drew you to come talk to us and apply for this? So every time you're looking for a company and you're doing this free research, make sure to follow them on LinkedIn. Make sure to read about the company. Make sure to show them why you're interested in that, in that company. Make sure to say, I came here because the ESG efforts you do are amazing or the diversity efforts you do are something that I'm looking for. But again, remember to align what your interests and requirements are to that company, because you may end up finding a company for its name. And then when you start working, that's not the culture for you. And if you have had done a little bit of research, talk to someone from that company, you could have understood a little bit more before you apply. Great. So guys, I saw your hands and I know most of you already have prepared like a resume already. Um, I wanted to go to some like tips or things that I even go back to whenever I'm updating mine. And yeah, we share some with this with Rafa as well. So first of all, for the formatting of your resume, I think you guys all know this, you have a college resume you have to keep to one page. And the reason for this is usually, this is crazy to me and I just found out of this. Recruiters take like an average of six to eight seconds to review resumes, which is crazy because they're trying to skim it. So they don't read through it. They look for keywords and stuff like that. So definitely keep that to one page. Uh, you wanna make sure your resume is clean and clear formatting. So what I mean with this is your font, your spacing, everything, try to make it look clean. You know, Like I said, recruiters are gonna take a quick look at it and we wanna make sure that it's easy for them to skim through it, to read through it. Um, least experience in reverse chronolo chronological order. And this we know, for example. So if you have an experience now, if you have a job right now, that's the thing that is gonna go first. And then if you had a job before or some experience you did before, that goes after that and so on and so on. Uh, same thing with your education. So you're in Penn State now, so that will be what you will show first on your resume. Um, for the content. So below every experience you write down in your resume, you wanna make sure you write like three to four bullet points. Um, and this usually what it shows is like what you did to the company, what you learned in the company. And some like, a good way to show these bullet points is using power verbs. So in like power verbs examples are implemented, managed, increased, facilitated. So instead of saying something like, I did this project, I, you can say something like, I implemented this idea in this project, I managed this project. And with these verbs, it is important that we use variety. So you don't want, if you already use the word, for example, implemented, you don't want to use it again in the next bullet point, right? So yeah, so just like, like use different verbs when it comes to that and also be a specific. And I think this is a very important one. Um, recruiters like to see numbers in the resume and that's usually something that calls their attention real quick too. So if you can quantify your experience, do that. So for example, if you work on your capstone team or you were like the leader of your capstone team, you can be, instead of saying, I was the leader of my capstone team, you can say something like, I was the leader of a capstone team that had four members. Or if you have helped the company raise some money, you can write down, um, we did this project with a profit of this amount of money and that definitely is gonna call the recruiter's attention. And then for your cover letter, um, write a cover letter that shows how you would be an asset to the company. I'm missing the word company there. <laughs> but so yeah, what a cover letter basically is, is you tell them a little bit of your interest, what your interest in the company, and then you show them like how the experience you have um, makes you a good asset, a good fit for the company. Um, a good tip about your cover letter and what I like to do is I usually go like to their bio page because they usually list like their mission, their vision, what the company is about, like Rafa talked about, like their culture. And I show them with that. I come back to my cover letter and tell them how the experience that I've had, the things I learned either in the school or in any experience that I had before can, you know, help them fulfill that mission or, you know, or fit in that company. Yeah. And, sorry. Go ahead. And then you cannot see it, but 
the biggest advice I have for you guys is make an appointment with career services. They, like, if you go to them with your resume, they're going to know the right way to tailor that for you, like, depending on the company, your major, what your interests are, and they literally get paid for it. <laughs> they know what they're doing, so definitely make an appointment with them. They can also help you with mock interviews, and they are the resource of all the networking of Penn State. So they have information of like events and stuff going on on campus that can help you connect and network with other people too at Penn State. So definitely go check them out. Yeah. And one thing I'm going to compliment here, cover letter. Don't write the same cover letter for multiple companies and change the name of the company or the manager. Do not. A lot of companies that use the same system that could track that you're submitting, especially if you're submitting those on LinkedIn, LinkedIn does track the documentation that you're sending. So you may say that you just changed that on your computer, but the formatting of it is going to show that previous editions or previous versions were for other places. So make sure when you're doing it, you're actually spending time. And it goes back to the research that you're doing about the company, that you're spending time when you're writing those cover letters. Don't write the same one, change the subject, and then, hey, I'm guilty of that. I used to do that until I realized that all was being tracked. <laughs> so please take a look at that and make sure that you're researching and when you're writing, you're being really assertive about what you want to say for that company. Based on your personal experience, what do you want to learn? Not only giving them the resume, Maria said six seconds, they're going to look at it. If you have something additional on why I did my research, here's why I want to work for you. Okay, I'm going to spend a little bit of time because I think this is the mo most valuable tool that I've used and I'm still using a lot on finding a job and maintaining your personal branding after you leave college. I've been away from Penn State for five years, not away because I still have a brother here and I can't get away from football. So I am, I've been on the workforce for five years. But when I was at Penn State, I, I understood really quickly about the, the LinkedIn uh, picture and everything that I had to do. I went to career services and they told me, your picture is not clear enough. Your picture doesn't show exactly what you are. It has, you know, other people because, you know, I cropped some other people from the background or I had something of me with my face to the side that doesn't show my face. So a couple of the tips that they had was first, make sure that you have a clear picture. And a clear picture means I'm going to go on a, on a background and that could be white, that could be blue, that could be that wall, that could be that wall, that could be that wall. And then you take something that then later you can actually see your face. So don't try to crop that from, you know, a football game or someplace where you were like here. Oh, I can't wear this. That you were here and then you have a suit and a tie on and then you try to crop. But then, you know, Maria's face is going to come on the, on the side, right? Or her hair is going to come on the side. Try to be very assertive about that. The introduction. So you have an about section on LinkedIn. Your introduction really needs to talk about who you are. They want to see the experience and the education where the experience and the education is asking for. They don't want to see the experience and the education in your about. So don't go and say, I spent two years at this company or I did an internship in the about. That's not what they want to see on the about introduction. They want to see what are your passions? What are the things that you're good at? What are the things that you're looking for? And this is what you're going to write on your about. And again, LinkedIn has something that is amazing right now that you can put in your profile picture, something that's called open to work. So if you, everyone here has a LinkedIn, by the way, raise your hand if you have a LinkedIn. Nice. All right, everyone, good. So if you have a LinkedIn, you can go up there and you can let all recruiters know that you're open to work. You can even tell them how much salary you want, what kind of positions you're looking for, what kind of hashtags you're following. So imagine that four years ago, five years ago, we didn't have all of that. If I was open to work, I had to go get in touch with recruiters, and we're going to talk about that. But now you can let them know in a green section that says, I am open to work, which is amazing. So when I go through LinkedIn, all of the phases of LinkedIn, you always need to take a look at the SMART methodology. Who knows what the SMART methodology is? Anyone? SMART. <laughs> All righty. So the SMART is specific, measurable, assertive, results-oriented, and then time-based. So every single thing that you're talking about in your education, the results that you have, you need to be very specific. Maria was saying about numbers. Be very specific. What numbers did you help in your internship? When you're involved at a club here, 
How many people did you manage or were you a leader of? How much money did you fundraise for that club that you were working on? Uh, what were your specific tasks that you had in that internship or in that education role? Same thing with measurable. Measurable, I think, is the most important one because it's very easy to see the numbers that are going to be in there. So one of the reasons GPA is very great to see on the measurable piece of it because there is a range that you can measure, right? You can go from, I think it's two or one or zero to four, <laughs> right? So then someone can measure because there is a balance or zero to 100%. And that's the balance that you're going to have. Um, when you're talking about education, you're here at Penn State. So you're going to put your education is everything in reverse, uh, reverse time frame or chronology, right? Chronological time frame, chronological yeah. Order. Chronological time frame. So you want to make sure that you're putting Penn State first. And then if you have other certifications or other schools that you went to, you can always put that on education. Also highlight in your education if you are part of honor school, if you're part of anything else that you're doing within that school. They also have sections for clubs, societies, but make sure that you're adding that at some point in your education. Um, highlights your achievements and awards, which is if you have any, please put them in there. And then the three last ones are going to be very important. First one is connecting with other people. So here you are in this room, have about 50, 40 people in this room. And I'm going to challenge you that after you leave here today, you're going to find your friends from your classes. You're going to find your colleagues from your classes. You're going to get from the people in your club. And you're going to get in touch with them on LinkedIn. And the reason I say that is, first, there is more engagement on LinkedIn when they like something, you're going to see that. When they comment on something, you're going to see that. Plus, in 5, 10, 15 years, you don't know where you are going to be. You don't know where they are going to be. And you want to be connected on LinkedIn because a lot of people are moving up in their career. And if you are connected with those people, this is what you know, we're calling of networking, the power of networking. A lot of jobs that you may get throughout your career are going to be based on your network. So make sure you're connecting with people. And then within here, what you're doing at Penn State, leverage that to use kudos and skills and give shout outs to people. So if you're giving shout out to people here, when you give a shout out to people you know, on LinkedIn, it's going to show on their profile and it's going to show for other people as well. So the, the main thing that I, that I talk about LinkedIn is leverage everything that you have in there. Write articles. They have the possibility of you writing articles. They have the possibility of you posting pictures and posting everything that you're doing. It's not an Instagram and it's not a Facebook and it's not a TikTok, but it is something more related to your work experience. All of the recruiters are in there. A lot of the work that they're doing is through LinkedIn. If you have something that is updated, if you have something that is telling your true story, most likely you're going to get a lot of views and a lot of visibility from these recruiters. So make sure that you're leveraging a lot of LinkedIn. Career services also has things about LinkedIn. And again, the best resource that we have right now, YouTube and Google. If you have any questions about LinkedIn, there are a lot of people teaching about LinkedIn. So please go ahead on, on YouTube and, and learn more. I just learned a lot about mine. I changed my banner. I changed my profile picture because that gives more visibility as well. So make sure that you're leveraging that, okay? So finding your next opportunity. So you got your resume ready, you have a cover letter, you have set up with the advice of Rafa <laughs> or your LinkedIn page. Now, where do I go to find a job? Where do I go to find an internship? So here are some things um, that you could do. Uh, first of all, our job search engines that I guess is the classic one, it's been there for ages. And you can just go by industry, by career, by job positions, and you can find what's open, what's out there, right? Um, one of my favorites is LinkedIn. Like Rafa said, um, all companies connect um, through LinkedIn and they put up their positions they have open there. So that is like a really good place to go and find opportunities. Also, they have like good features that you can use. For example, they have this um, quick apply that you can use. So if you find yourself wanting to apply to a lot of companies at the same time, and you feel like you need to apply to a lot of companies, that is like a quick way to just send your information to a lot of companies. Um, Nina Nee Lion Careers, that's the job search engine from Penn State University. And one of the reasons I really like this job is because usually the employers that are listed here are employers that are interested in hiring Penn State students. So you definitely will find good opportunities there. Um, the next two, Going Global and MyVisaJobs.com. They're also search engines that you are only going to find people that are currently sponsoring visas in the United States. 
So the way that I use this platform, actually, when I was looking for my job is I will go there. Um, like I said, you can look for them industry, occupation or job title. I will find the companies that were offering and then I went to their career service to the career website. And then I will see what positions were open and then, you know, I'll make my pick and then I apply through their career website. And again, company career sites. I mean, I think a lot of people, if you like your major, you already have research about what things you can do after college, what companies you like. So if you do have a company that you like, the best place to find like the information is the source. So definitely the career website is the way to go. All the job positions are gonna be open there. And then networking. Um, so some places you can network. Uh, social media in LinkedIn is a good option. Actually, I just found out about um, that through LinkedIn, you can basically find, how do I explain this? Um, you can find like a person that already has your job that, or your dream job. And then you can text them, you can send them a message and being, I'm interested in an informal interview, like an informational interview. And what this basically is, is you can talk to them and then you get more information about the job, what things I have to learn, what experience do I have to get so I can do that job in the future. And it's just like an interview. That you where you get informed and you get like some tools to start working on what you want to do later right um another thing is lion link this um tool is also from penn state and what is basically is you set up your student account and there's a lot of alumni from penn state that have set their accounts too with different majors and they're all parts of the world that are open to receiving emails for networking. So you can email them, I am interested in this position or I'm interested in this experience that you had before and like, how can we connect? Or can I send you my resume? All of that, right? So definitely check that out. Um, we have Ripple Match and Way App as well. Um, this is, they bought our platforms. They're a little bit like Lion Link. You basically um, set up your account, you put all your information, you put your resume, your cover letter, and they match you with companies that feed uh, your resume. And then Penn State Network and Reception events. Like I said before, like the career services, they are always doing events. Like I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Penn State Career Fair that is coming up next week. But apart from that, there are so many um, career fairs like for your own major or, you know, so many dinners where companies just come and wanna talk to students and are open. And those are all open to Penn Staters. So definitely go to that. Even sometimes you get a free meal, so why not, right? <laughs> Um, so yeah, you wanna... and then the Penn State Fall Career Fair. So next week, guys, I want you all to be there. Um, this year is, is special because of COVID. Um, usually the, the career fair happens on the Bryce Jordan Center and it's a three day event. But this year, what they're doing is they're doing one day presence and the other two is going to be online. So I have some tips for you to prepare before actually going, if you're going to the like presence career fair. Uh, you want to print your resume and a good rule of thumb for this is like if you want to talk to 10 companies do double so whatever the amount of companies you want to talk to just double them it's better to have more resumes than be left with no um, also before going research the companies uh, make sure you go to their website they know what they're about prepare some questions for them before going to talk to them and then prepare your pitch so basically, it's like a small introduction, a little bit of who are you, where are you studying, where you're interested, where you're looking for, um, and yeah. Also, for after the career fair, it is very important to stay in contact. So what's going to happen in the career fair is like, there's usually lines, you line up to talk to every single employer. And sometimes they invite you for interviews, but when they, not, when they don't invite you for interviews, sometimes they just give you a contact card or they give you an email. And definitely when, to get, when you get home, if there's a company that you like, definitely reach out and be like, thank you for talking to me today. Um, my name is this, um, this is my resume. I'm gonna touch my resume again. I hope that we can keep in contact and hope you're well, right? And I just added this question because actually my sister asked me this like last week. I said, what year should I start just attending the career fair? Because this feels like in the career fair, most people are either looking for an internship or looking like for a job, right? And then some employers are just looking for juniors and seniors, but I would advise, even if you're a freshman, it's always a good idea to start going to these events because even if you're not gonna get an internship that year, it is a good idea just to go and practice your interview skills. Just like, if you get nervous talking to people, that's a good way to practice or even just going to the employers and be like, okay, I'm interested in this position for the future. What can I do now to be prepared 
to, you know, to be ready for this position whenever I, you know, I'm in the right year yeah. to do it, right? And that's a perfect point. And I'm going to give the example. I, I've been coming here to represent Lenovo and, and hired just for Penn State for four years for the global supply chain rotational program that we created. And I remember the second or third year that we came here, I think it was two years ago, 2019, right before COVID, there was a, a girl, she was a freshman and she came talk to us and she was like, I'm not really sure what I want to do. I don't know what my major should be but I saw Lenovo and I saw the rotational program and I was really interested in what you were doing. And it's been really successful. I had a friend of mine that actually did an internship last year, last year but I'm still a freshman. This year, she's turning to be a junior and she, is, she just did her, her internship with us because she went on the first year, she had her resume, she was still a freshman. She wasn't, I think she was three, three, three weeks in, at school at Penn State because the career fair is September. So she had just started. But she had heard from a friend that, you know, the experience was nice and she just went out there. She was just asking companies, what do you think I should do next year to prepare? What should I be doing with my resume next year? So it's always good at least to try one time. And then you're going to see as you get into the career fair, the first company you're going to talk, you're probably going to be a little nervous. So you can even pick not your dream company, right? Go talk to another company, talk to someone, you're a little nervous. Because then when you get to the second and the third companies, it's, it's usually a little bit easier to do. And with virtual... You're at home. You can be at home and you can do three, four, five, six companies in 15, 20 minutes. Just make sure that you're very assertive about it. Make sure that you ask the right questions. All the companies want you to not only be giving you a pitch, but also asking questions. All right. Telling about the interview. Uh, Maria just mentioned about the pitch. Everyone here has done a pitch before. Yes, no. Alrighty. So a pitch, I like to say it's probably the only time in your college life that you're actually, even if you are not a salesperson, you're going to have to be a salesperson. You're going to have to sell yourself. So you're going to have to tell them, this is who I am. These are my internships. And this is why you should hire me. Because if you come out there and I'm going to give an example if you come out there and say, Hey, my name is Rafa. I really love a job. They're going to ask you why. But if you come out there and you say, hey, my name is Rafa, I had three internships, I'm part of this club, my GPA is really great, but the most thing or the most interesting thing about your company is the efforts that you're doing for diversity and inclusion, how do I get in there? You see the difference? You want to have a pitch, you want to talk about yourself, and even if it's set for 30 seconds, of course, don't go out there and use those 30 seconds that if it was, you know, a non-stopping breathe as while you're talking, and they're going to start asking you questions. Why did you get so interested? And then you start telling them about your experience. So make sure that you have a pitch. In your interview, a lot of the things that questions that are going to be asked, they're up here. So the education and work experience, uh, and they're going to ask you about, and the, the questions that usually companies ask, they are very standard. So you can go before any interview and prepare 50. And I mentioned here 100, 50 to 100 questions. They're, Every company is going to ask one of them because we get a list from HR and talent acquisition with all of the same questions, right? And then year over year, we just pick which ones we want to ask. If you practice all of them, you know how to answer all of them, right? So it's just something you go on Google, get a hundred questions, answer them, make sure that you know at least some bullet points, how to answer them. When you get in the interview, okay, tell me a time where you had, you know, to deal with something that was not the way that you expected, or tell me a time where you had an experience with the project that you needed more time, or the professor didn't give you more time. If you wrote that down, you know how to answer each one of these. You don't need to be thinking, oh, let me think about one time, or let me think about another time. Uh, appropriate dress code, uh, virtual and in person. One thing I remember, because COVID started, and even before COVID, even if you're wearing something on the top, wear something on the bottom. Sometimes these we pals and these interviews that you have to do recording, they do ask you to stand up. So make sure you're wearing something on the bottom. Don't put like a suit and then shorts or boxers, please. Uh, research the company, be on time, uh, check the technology in advance. So if you are able to 30 minutes, 15 minutes before anything that is online, make sure that you're checking the online. The career fair also has, or the career services also has, I think, uh, labs with computers that you can use the space. Uh, so you can go in there if you don't feel comfortable doing that at home, uh, go in there and make sure that you can do it. Uh, and then each one of the questions after you finished your interview, make sure you have questions prepared for them. 
The worst thing for someone that is interviewing you is that when you end your questions as an interviewer, that the interviewee has no questions. Make sure that you have three, four, five. Tell me a day in the life of this position that I'm applying for. Tell me what is the career growth. Tell me what the expectations that you have from me. Tell me when I get that job, what are you expecting me to do? Are you expecting me to go in there and in three months to own the entire process? Or do you expect me just to be someone that is listening in and learning? And then six months later, you're gonna ask me to do the same thing. So make sure you're asking the questions. Make sure that when you research the company, every single piece of it, you're like, oh, this I don't understand. And a lot of companies, they put acronyms. And acronyms is something that once you get, we were just talking about that today, uh, about Oracle and Lenovo. We all have acronyms. Companies now have acronyms and everything is an acronym. And on their website, they put these acronyms and sometimes they miss it. And if you go in there and you find a couple, okay, what does that mean? Right, and I'm gonna give an example. Who knows what ESG is? All right, we're gonna talk about that later. All righty, and then the last thing is follow up, about the, uh, follow up after the interview. After you ask questions, go on LinkedIn, reach out to them, make sure, hey, thank you for your interview today. If you have any additional questions, please let me know. And this is, this is a good way of knowing. Always ask about the next steps. You finish the interview, what are the next steps after here? You do not want to finish an interview and not know what comes next. You may hear in six months, three months, two weeks, tomorrow. Always make sure that you ask what comes after the interview. The interview is already a step after the career fair. So it's something that you already progressed a little bit, okay? All righty, so now we're gonna talk about career spotlight and I'm gonna be very, very quick on this. Who can tell me a couple of the careers nowadays that are super famous? Raise your hand and just tell me. Software engineering, data science, one, machine learning. Okay, what else? I see a lot of tech. UX design, supply chain, what else? Anyone else? So I'm gonna go back to my previous question. What is ESG? Who knows what ESG is? Anyone? Has anyone heard that every single company now in the New York, who follows the New York exchange market? Or stock exchange? Everyone, two people, three people? Every company now to be listed in the, in the New York ex stock exchange, they need to have in their yearly report something about ESG, environmental, social, and government. If they don't have something in their report, they can't be listed there. So a lot of companies are doing a lot of things about environment, about social, and about governance. So make sure that you know this word because I'm gonna put up there one of the good jobs and one of the things that the companies are looking for is people that know about ESG. And if you are in college and you have more time than people that are already working and you wanna learn about ESG, you have that time. Same thing about another job that is really important nowadays. It's called change management. Who heard of change management? There are now a lot of certifications on change management because there's so much change going on, especially with COVID. If you're certified in change management and they have jobs that are specifically for, for change management, you get that job. And to be very honest, if you already know and if you have experience on change management, that's easier. So let's talk also about project management, complex project management. A lot of companies hiring for project management. And then there is Agile, Scrum, Scrum Master. And if you haven't heard of those, a lot of certifications are available as well. So I'm going to put here on the next one and you're going to see some of the what I think are very important right now. So we mentioned technology, digital transformation, ESG, diversity and inclusion, computer science. And one of the things we're gonna to specialize today as well, and we're gonna talk a little bit is mental health and the importance of mental health in the corporate world, okay? All right, the application process. When you're applying, uh, Something that was created not too long ago, and I, I heard someone at Lenovo mentioning, it's called the application tracking system. Uh, has everyone seen an application tracking system? I hadn't seen one until like two, two months ago. Uh, it's something like an Excel spreadsheet for you, but it's a, it's a database that every time you apply to something, you can mark there which jobs you applied and then it keeps track of it. I think it's super awesome because when I did, I was doing Excel spreadsheet and I was copying websites and putting my Excel spreadsheet, what job application, but then I couldn't follow up. I had to do the same thing. So make sure that you leverage some of these ATS. Uh, so you can go on Google and, and take a look at the ATS. We talked about LinkedIn, the quick apply. 
that's going to get all your information and it's going to quick apply to that job, leverage your network, and then make sure that you know the recruiting timelines of companies as well. So if they are here for the career fair in September, that means that by like October, November, they want to be done with all of their recruiting efforts for the following year. So don't wait to start applying for jobs until January before the fall or before the May that you're going to graduate. Start the year before. So July and August, if you're a sophomore or a junior for next year, make sure that you're doing this already. A year before you start applying and say, hey, in May, I want a job. Because by November, all of the jobs that are open for the May, the following May and June, they're going to be done. So make sure that you understand the recruiting timeline of each one of the companies that you want to apply for. And the last thing is overcoming poster syndrome. So when you're talking to companies, regardless what it is, we're going to be all afraid of saying our achievements and make sure that you mention them. Make sure that if you have achievements, if you have things that you want to talk about, that you're actually talking about them. I know it's difficult and I know it takes time, but make sure you leverage those. All righty. So reviewing and negotiating an offer. So you have gotten an offer letter. Congratulations. After you call your mom, there are some things you want to review and make sure you're being taken care of, especially being an international student in the United States. So um, first of all, the, um, does this job offer a visa sponsorship? And this is probably you have you're, would have talked about already in the interview. But when you're negotiating, especially if you're not in a STEM major, you want to make sure that this company has offered you a visa sponsorship, if not when you are beginning of the job after a year or after some time working with them. So make sure they're gonna offer you a visa. Um, also medical insurance, <laughs> medical bills can get very expensive here. So make sure um, your company is offering you a good medical insurance, good dental insurance, um, your 401k and a company match. This is basically your retirement plan. Uh, you get to invest a portion of your money on this retirement plan monthly. So when you are, 65, 60, you have like a cushion where you can leave from that. And I will very recommend you to do that with them, especially because most companies match some of the percentage that you invest. So for example, some of them is 4%, some of them 6%, which is basically free money. So if you're investing some, you're getting some from the company as well. And definitely the PTO. Like one of the things you're gonna miss the most when you graduate from college is summer vacation. You're not gonna get vacation, you're gonna to have to be working. So definitely make sure your company gives you some extra days where you can either you know, be with your family, spend a free time, or even like for medical appointments or stuff that you have to get done outside of work. And then bonus plans. Um, this would, I wouldn't find this as important of the three first ones, but definitely like if they're offering bonus plans, some companies offer now bonus plans for COVID or just for, um, Christmas or, you know, like at the end of the year. So definitely check those out. Um, some things to consider when they have, when for your paycheck is the cost of living. So depending where you leave, like the costs change. So make sure if you, there's this web page called Glassdoors where you can find the average um, pay for, the, for different job titles. So if you go there, um, you can negotiate with them already with like, an average or like something that you know is suitable for the job that you're doing. Um, and yeah, and check out the work schedule. So most of jobs that you're gonna, go, are probably gonna get like an eight to five job, but there are a lot of jobs that offer like weekend schedules or like after hour schedules. So make sure you're comfortable with that. I know sometimes they give you great offers and they're like, oh, but you have to work the weekends but just make sure you are all right with that. And the, if you need the weekends, like just to rest or to see your family, make sure you prioritize those things or like choose something that works with your time. And yeah, negotiating. Um, like I said, whenever they give you an offer, it's never the last offer. You can always counter back something else. If there's something that is important to you or do you think that they need to offer to you to feel comfortable in the company, by all means, send them an email. They know they expect a counter offer. Um, always be respectful, yeah. All righty, so the visa understanding, uh, we're gonna talk about that later. So I do not want to uh, cover this. It's something that we want to talk about. Uh, and later we're also gonna have some time to go over that you have time to ask questions on how our process was. And I know a lot of people here have gone through uh, this process. So I just wanna make sure that if you have questions later, please come talk to us. We can talk about H1B, OPT, and we're gonna have someone here as well too. Uh, respond uh, the questions. Alrighty, and then I guess just finishing. Oh. I guess just finishing up. Um, 
everything you guys are going through, if anyone is graduating or looking for a job now, being an international student, it can take, you know, at all, because not only you have to think about your classes, you have to think about, you know, are my OPT papers coming in? Am I getting a job that is going to offer me a visa? I'm away from home too, you know? So I just wanted to like make a reminder, like check on yourself, make sure you're doing well. If you're feeling sad to um, remember you have a community here, especially as international students, we all know how it feels to be away from home and going through the same thing. So definitely check on your friends. If you need to talk, um, Penn State offers great opportunities that you can do. They offer uh, individual and group counseling, self-help options. They also have classes like yoga, meditation, all this stuff where you can meet with other people, you know, that sometimes are going through the same things as you, or you just want to meet other people, you know. And the and puppies at the final session as well, final yeah. season. You the puppies that come on site. Oh, yeah. There's, they bring puppies. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Don't, forget to, don't forget to enjoy the puppies. But yeah, but definitely take advantage <laughs> of that. I mean, I used it. I know Rafa used it once too. And we, yeah, like, like I said, being away from home and like all of the stuff we have to do, we definitely, most important is taking care of ourselves and making sure we're enjoying the process because it's fun. Like, it's a lot of things to look forward to. You know, it's ex an exciting time. So let's make sure we're feeling well so we can enjoy it as we should. Yeah. And make sure that you are using the mental health service. I used it, Maria used it, she mentioned, and it's not anything to be afraid of or be ashamed of. It's something that is available for you that if you're not feeling like yourself or if you're feeling a little bit different, not being able to cope with a lot of the stress, then, hey, it takes a lot of stress to find a job while you're maintaining your good grades, while you're part of clubs, while you're away from your family. So there's a lot of things that come into your life that are different than before. So make sure that if you have anything that is getting stressful to you, that you're looking for help and the international community, your friends, that's going to be what feels closer to home as well. And if you have those friends and if you have uh, people around you, it's, it's going to make it easier. Maria and I, we've met about five, six years ago and uh, we've remained friends and we have a group of friends that we, we try to see each other at least twice, three times a year. And this really helps because all of us are away from home uh, we have family in Brazil, Ecuador, Spain, Puerto Rico. So it's always good that uh, we're able to maintain in touch and, and keep in touch after school as well. So make sure you're leveraging those resources. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself. And uh, we truly appreciate everyone being here today. Okay, thank thank you. you so much, guys. to go to Korea, uh, raise your hands. I hope by now with this encouragement, you will all be going, okay? Um, definitely check with Korea Center if you haven't done so, uh, make appointment many, many years ago. I'm a really, really old person, right? No, <laughs> anyway, long time ago, I came as an international student, okay? Before graduating, I made appointment with Korea Center I had um, professionals look at my resume, and then I went to Syracuse University Career Days. And guess what? After three interviews, I got a job with Lockheed Martin. So you can get a very good job that speak to you, like Rafa talked about, check the interest, you know, what interest you have, check the company information, and be prepared. And don't wait for last year before you graduating, okay? Practice and, and be there and learn and build your skills, build your confidence, okay? And the second part of this, we are having a panel who will be answering your questions. And five of them are our global alumni from five different countries. And then we are so honored to have Masume Asaf, who is the uh, uh, assistant vice, vice provost for ESA, which is International Student Scholars. Um, is uh, association is that advising? Advising, yeah. <laughs> okay, all the acronyms. See, I'm still learning too. Um, so I have received 30 some questions, but I'd like to have a little bit uh, change. So I have one question from you. One question I'll read out for what you have already submitted to when you register, right? So right now I'm gonna start with a question from our out here if you have a question just raise your hands we'll pass the microphone to you and um, our panel will be so happy to um, answer your question so just raise your hand um, when you are ready go ahead
thanks for the presentation first. My question would be, what do you think is the, the biggest advantage of being an international student and working in the United States? Question? Could it a little bit louder? Yeah. <laughs> so by being an international student here in the United States, what do you think is the biggest advantage? Like when collaborating with in projects or working with other people? <laughs> I can take this one. Okay. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Brandon. I was born in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Um, I have been working in the consulting industry for five years. I'm based out of the New York office. So I feel, and also I was on an expatriate assignment in Canada for two. So I feel like I can uh, speak a bit to this question. But I think as an international student, I, I can understand, right? You know, we come from our own roots where we have assimilated to the culture and our identity there. And when you come here, it's like you have to readjust again, right? But I think sometimes we overlook the fact that we have our own unique perspective on not just life, but business and how things are done there. And I think from my experience and looking at how things work nowadays, it's not just business done in one country or the US or the UK. It's, it's, it's a global market right now. And it's becoming even more global with technology and remote work. So I would say um, just bringing your unique perspectives, processes, and mindsets to, to it and just conveying your story in a unique way um, is a big advantage for us. And I think it really helps us stand out in a unique way that helps you get noticed. Thank you, Brandon. Anybody else want to add to this? Um, Timmy, you want to uh, uh, yeah. introduce yourself first? <laughs> okay. yeah. um, so hi, everyone. My name is Timmy Famadeo. I work as a product manager for Oracle um, in their supply chain planning and collaboration team. Um, I think. A lot of what I will say is along the lines of what Brandon says, you come in to a new environment and you're able to adjust. And that's really helpful in the workplace where you're going to be working with people from different countries and you're going to be working with teams. If you work in a bigger company like with Oracle, a lot of the teams are everywhere. Sometimes we're working with the Indian team, teams in Mexico and Colombia and different countries. And you need to understand business in different teams, right? And, you understand, and also understand that business and is cultural. As much as we try and keep it professional, it's a lot of times business also culture comes into business. And when you're international students, you have an experience like that because you're, you're forced to be outside your um, comfort zone. When you come to a different country, you live in a different country, and you interact with so many people from different countries. Like here, where a lot of us were global ambassadors um, with people from different countries, and we've made friends with people from different countries. So that, I think that's an, a big advantage that sometimes is overlooked. Thank you, Timmy. Anybody else want to add to that? Or we'll move to the next question. So I'm going to read out from this um, question list. We have, again, received 30 some questions. This question is, um, I just pick one. How to navigate for a job in the United States as an international student? How to, it's kind of pretty big you know, question. How to navigate for a job? I kind of you cover a little bit. Would you like just to summarize a little, Rafa or uh, Maria? Hello. Uh, so navigate. I'm um, understanding this as navigate trying to find a job or navigate as soon as you find a job. Yeah, looks well. Oh, okay. Uh, so I think navigating overall is trying to find a job. We try to cover the majority of it. That you have to think about what your requirements, interests are, and Think about what you benefit from the company, what benefits, what kind of skill sets that you're learning that you can take an advantage for that company. Get the job, how you navigate is, there's a lot of, I think there are major words that you can get into a company. One of them is network, the other one is communication, and the last one is network. Uh, communication and network is, as you come into a company and you want to navigate how you are within the company, why don't you make sure that you're meeting as many? Uh, you make sure that you're getting out there as a learning, imagine you're a learning machine, right? So you come into that company, you're learning from one area, another area, another area. Person has a different way to 
especially now with global companies, you're talking to Sammy was saying Mexico, US, Canada. One day you're going to talk to people from 12, 15 different countries. Every person has a different background. Every person brings something to the table. So how do you communicate differently with one of them? And how do you bring yourself, your true self to work, having empathy, understanding where they're coming from, and understanding what kind of advantages, benefits will both bring you. Once you start understanding that, the navigation, through, navigation in the job that you're getting just becomes easy to process for you. Thank you, Rafa. Is it possible to just add something real very quick? Um, if by navigation you also mean how to get a job, um, one thing that I think is really important and that really helped me was attending conferences. Um, there are a lot of student conferences that are very specific to what you're looking for. Um, if you're an engineering society of women engineers, Grace Hopper, National Society of Black Engineers, there's so many, and there are a lot of companies that will sponsor your trip there. Penn State, depending on what campus you are, but some Penn State campuses do sponsor your trip to go to these conferences, but you meet with a lot of companies, Microsoft, Google, you name it, and they have very small events, like what they call hospitality suites, where you, into, you talk to recruiters face-to-face -face and they offer jobs. I know Boeing, for example, will offer like a hundred jobs in one day <laughs> in some of these conferences. Conferences are very, are very, very important. If you can get, and if you, if you, if you look at it and think, oh, it's too expensive, a lot of these big companies are offering scholarships for it. So attend conferences specific to your major. Thank you. Anybody else want to add to that? I do. Um, oh, go ahead, Masuma. This is not my subject area. <laughs> <laughs> but I have two children who have, um, one has gone to Penn State, one has not. Um, my daughter has a PhD in biochemistry and go to Penn State, but she got her job with, through an informational interview. Um, they liked her and they offered her the job and she wasn't actually looking for the job at that point. My son was not looking for a job, but he does tell people this. He does belong to the alumni associate, Penn State alumni Association. He moved to North Carolina um, and he can join. There's somebody from the alumni association here, so I guess you can tell people how to do this. I guess. But I, you join that particular area's alumni group and he networked through that alumni group. And you know, there's somebody who works at Volvo in, Greens in Greensboro, North Carolina area. So, and he has become friends with that person. So um, there are ways, other ways of also networking and, and the Penn State Alumni Association, because it is so big, is one way to do it. That's so true. I can echo on that one because um, our international students, you have either, you might decide to stay in this country to work. So their alumni association in your state will be living, or many of you may return to home countries. There are also worldwide alumni chapters. Every day I saw this Shanghai alumni chapter, which a group, for example, hosting jobs, you know? So a lot of cross cultural and cross border international global jobs, some working online, some virtual or some hybrid. When I see those jobs, I say, if I happen to return to Shanghai, I will apply just, you know, so there's plenty of opportunities, but be connected. Connect with your alumni chapter of your place. So you never know that networking and this um, connection can really bring you a lot of opportunities. Okay, so let's move to the next question. Anybody want to ask a question? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, so my question is, well, I'd like each of the panel members to answer, please. And I wanted to know what made you decide to remain in the U.S. rather than going back to your home country to find a job? A good question. What made you to decide to stay here to work in the United States? Because there are a lot of opportunities in your home countries too. But go ahead. Yeah, each take a turn. Yeah. Um, well. I come from Ecuador and I, I've been one, I, I wanted to be a mechanical engineer for a while before I came here to the United States. And the opportunity, sadly, whenever like in Ecuador weren't a lot of them. So I always saw like United States, like a source of so many opportunities. I saw so many companies that, um, you know, I grew up listening to, or I just saw like on the products I bought or that I had at home. So 
So, you know, it was like the place to go and like grow in those companies, in those spaces uh, was the United States. So that's what I chose to come here. Thank you. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I, I think overall, as I look in Brazil, it's, it still does have opportunity, but there's a lot of volatility. My decision to stay here was more in regards to, I, I see a lot of my friends where they're the same age and they graduate college and back home with parents until they're 30. Uh, before they can move out. And for me, it was something I've been away for so long that I wanted something that I could live in. When I got the job as a, a reference, I didn't know about the whole, right? So I got the first job not knowing my major was MOPT, does OPT. So when I started finding out about the entire visa process, like, why did I choose? Because it is a very long process. But as I started doing it and I understood I could live on my own, I could do the things on my own and I don't need to go back and necessarily live with my parents again. I, that was my decision. That was my personal decision. Because if I move back home, I'll probably have to move back in with them, you know, live under the roof time with you. I could go myself and you know. independent. Yeah. That's good too. Yeah. Hiram, can you introduce yourself first and then after Yep. Uh, first of all, before um, I answer, asking the learning more. I can find a job. So that's very But I do. Um, find your. Out now. Um, that was a really good answer. <laughs> um, um, okay. Do you, you want to ask? You can question? go ahead. Ask your question. Go ahead. You can. Yeah. You want to say something real quick, or you probably have some reflection on this? Then we'll Timmy and continue. Okay, okay, thank you. So first, I introduce myself. Okay. <laughs> I'm Xia Junli uh, from China. I'm a law student in law school. Also, before I come here, I'm a lawyer in China for many years. So after graduation here, maybe I want to look for internship. But uh, could you give me some advice how to get the internship in law firm or how many? Yeah. Law firms. Law firm or uh, company. Law firm. Also, company is also okay. Okay. Can you can we hold on that one? We're gonna have Timmy and uh, Brandon finish the previous uh, question. Okay. Sorry, I thought you have reflection on difference, but we'll get to your questions. Okay. So Timmy, go ahead. Talk about why you decide to stay in the United States rather than returning to Nigeria. Um. So my <laughs> my decision was very sporadic. Um, very much based on opportunities, very much based on the offers I got. Um, I, I'll be, I won't be honest if I don't say also the money. <laughs> they pay well in the U.S. <laughs> U.S. jobs pay well and the conversion rates are different. Um, now with my job, I, I know that back home in Nigeria, there are Oracle employees there. If I want to transfer, there's that opportunity. It might not be as easy to transfer the other way around. So Nigeria to the U.S. Um, transfer. So 
being totally honest. Opportunities, the money. Um, yeah. Thank <laughs> basically you. Basically that. Brendan. So I think basically a little bit of what everyone was saying, you know, opportunity, um, just um, being able to pay back your independence. But I think for me personally, it would be uh, getting a unique perspective. Because I know for most of us, you know, when you graduate from Penn State, you know, reputable overseas degree in the US, like when you go back, for the most part, it's, it's, it's you're at advantage when you go home. And I think um, I just wanted something different and to experience this, especially, you know, in my, that time it was my early 20s. So, I just took it up and, and just went with it. But uh, I think it's definitely powerful. Thank you, Brandon. I want to add to that. It's <laughs> so important. You build experience internationally in the United States. You have a choice to return to your country because the experience you build internationally, you, are, you definitely have better skills, capability, and also they look at you more like expatriate returning to your country. So your pay scale would be this rather than just Finish education, return home will be, so, so there's a big difference there. So, all right, now return to your question. You talked about how to find an internship for law, 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 law firm. Sure. We don't have a lawyer yet, so I'm not sure we can talk about this. Well, I mean, I- Karen? Yeah, um, go ahead. You both out here? Yeah. Well, I think it one depends on what, area of law that you um, practice because there are many boutique law firms um, such as intellectual property. Um, there are some boutique law firms. I, um, I would think you're fat, usually at the graduate level or in the professional school area, it's your faculty that are gonna help lead you to some prospects for employment and um, and let you know where other graduates, international student graduates of where they have found employment. Because if one employer hires somebody who is an international, it's very likely that another employer will hire somebody as well. Um, Thank you, Masume. And did you want to add something? Thank you. Hope that answers your question. Good. All right. Next question. I'm gonna read unless you have something you really wanna ask. You can. Oh, go ahead, Yvonne. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm just really curious to find out like what was your degree in here at Penn State, and also this way other students could feel like they might be able to relate that. Good yeah. question. So each take a turn. I studied mechanical engineering at Penn State. I did management supply chain. I did double major in marketing and management. I think my microphone died. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll share with Timmy. Um, so I did my MBA and also a master's in information system. Marketing. And all of them, not just doing well academically, they're very involved. Um, they were my global ambassadors, global nine mentors, club leaders, and also I remember your Latino student club president and um, and IAA Association, they are so engaged. So when you, you really need to take advantage of this environment, Penn State has students from 150 some countries in University Park. They're mostly from, Harris, they're actually all from Harrisburg, 50 some countries represent. It's like a global community right here. So be engaged, learn, connect with students from around the world. Prepare yourself when you are getting interviewed, your future boss could be from India, come from and, you know, uh, Iran, so then you can speak about their festival, their custom, and so just don't waste time. Don't just study only. So study and connect and make friends be engaged. Anna, so one more question. So for, uh, Anna, Anna, just, yeah. I think, add to what you're saying, right? Yeah. 
a lot of the interviews when you go to, uh, as we are interviewing as tech company and probably other people as well, as you're helping your companies interview, they do look at your GPA, don't get me wrong. They do look at it. But what's more important is what the involvement that you had within Penn State. My brother's here and he can attest. I tell him all the time, get involved. You know, get a good GPA and that's great, but get involved in something else. Like, what are your passions? Go find them while you're in school. What are the things that you like to do? At that time, when I came here, we were both playing tennis at Penn State. And we said, hey, we're really passionate about the diversity and inclusion area of Latino clubs. So let's create the Latino. Then we, you end up learning about other things. But get involved as a Global Lion ambassador, Global Lion mentor. Go meet new people. Because at the end of the day, if you only say I had a 4.0, hey, this is great. But then you had no internships or no involvement in, in school. There's not much more that you can add. The only thing you can say is you had the 4.0, right? And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. I'm just saying if you do have the time, that's something that you're looking for, please make sure to get involved. And Penn State has absolutely everything. The club fair that they do in the beginning of the semester, I think they do, I don't know if they still Yes, involvement center. Involvement center. Oh, no, they do in front of Old Main, right? Yeah. There's like 300, 400 clubs, right? You can get involved a in thousand. a thousand, <laughs> see? A thousand clubs. Get involved in something that you, yeah. I'm sure they have one thing that you like, right? And get involved in something that you're doing something additional and not only studying. First, that's going to take your mind off of things, not only, you know, 24 hours a day or 16 hours a day studying, uh, but also you. Thanks. That's just one piece of advice that's really going to help you throughout Penn State, but that's also going to help you when you're looking for a job because you can talk more than just. Yeah, sorry. Also, you differentiate yourself because I feel nowadays most Penn State students are like great students, like 4.0 from high school, and they come to Penn State to do the same thing. So they graduate with a 4.0, so they have an internship and a 4.0 in like whatever major it is. So they're all the same. So you have to differentiate yourself, show that you have involved, involvement somewhere else as well. Yeah, and Brandon, do you want to add something? Yeah, just to like, give her a quick tip, you should definitely volunteer for Anna's, Anna's office. Thank and, you. <laughs> I mean, look at all of us, we're all involved. Uh, They're all my <laughs> crew. So yeah. I'll be studying. Just a, a, just a quick tip. Thank you, student ambassador to Global Alumni Program. So definitely check your email, apply, because you'll be connecting with them. They are your mentors, right? They connect you to the world. and professionally and socially and also back home so you know definitely go apply and i'm very engaged with our students i really want to inspire you to have the best version of you okay all right so more questions from here oh Question. yeah one more you okay. go ahead sure um there's a lot of international students that have this huge barrier of you know language barrier there's this like this invisible barrier right like i'm sure all of you have gone through that and you know, kind of you know, hopped over at some point. What, how, what was your, like, what would be your advice for international students that, you know, it's sometimes it's like their shyness. Sometimes it's the language, right? They simply cannot write English well enough to really give a good one minute, two minute pitch. Um, you know, how, how did you overcome that in order for them to, you know, find success? And it may be really difficult for them to be involved because they, it's just not them. So how do you, how do you do that? Ivan, can you introduce yourself? Oh, sure. You have such a caring heart, but you need to introduce yourself. So I'll see ah, you too. Yeah, sure. So my name is Yvonne Wang, and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions in Smale College of Business for our graduate professional program. Um, so I help, um, you know, students that are in our master's program and I want to help them succeed. And I'm also the advisor for Chinese Student Council on campus. So I have a huge heart at this university, really just trying to help our international students navigate through the various levels of resources that we have available. Penn State is so large. <laughs> and one of the most difficult part is really navigating through everything that we have out here. And, and, and so my biggest passion is just to see my students succeed and eventually find that you know, career they have been looking for, find that stability, find the life they have searched for. You know, I have some students that probably spend their whole life savings trying to come here, you know, invested onto this program, right? And so like what, what you know, really want them to get out what they're really hoping for. So 
Um, and I know we have the resources to help them. I always tell my students, if you didn't, if I, it's probably because you didn't, like you, it's really hard to not find success here at Penn State because we have so much available for them. So how to break barriers. So, you know, when you first come as international student, language barrier, culture shock, how do you break barrier when you first came to the country and allow you to grow and then be successful professionals right now? Um, so I can, I can start. I think, so I, I don't know if um, the college has this, but even with what Anna is doing, where they connect you with um, alumni, gets you a, a comfortable space where you can practice um, speaking, right? With someone that you don't know, especially when it's alumni from different countries. So you're forced to speak, for example, in English. Um, English is my first language, but I was telling Maria that um, I've been... <laughs> been learning a different language now and sometimes you get very shy especially when you're talking to people who are native and they're fluent and, and you, you you get you get like in your head I think two things is also to give yourself grace um take your time give yourself grace also practice so with the two minutes pitch that you're going to um, give practice a lot practice with people practice with your friends have when you have international friends you're forced to speak in that in, in a different language um, the other big thing I think for me with language learning is <laughs> consume a lot of media. <laughs> I know it's, it sounds bad, but consume a lot of media in the language that you're trying to learn. So if English is still a struggle, a, a struggling point for you, read in English, watch TV in English, um, what's it called? Listen to YouTube, whatever you like. I, I love telenovelas, so I watch <laughs> a lot of telenovelas in Spanish watch read keep taking in because subconsciously you're picking up a lot of the I guess the, the slangs the very casual language it's it's difficult like I can't imagine having to interview in a different language 24-7 or speaking in a different language so give yourself that grace but also keep practicing talk to people find your friends find your community where you can keep practicing and do mock interviews with your friends I did that a lot with my friends do that with your friends because it's a comfortable and safe space for you to do so very nice. Mock interview. Sounds good. <laughs> Brendan, I thought you want to also say something. Go yeah, ahead. I, I think the two biggest things for me was being open-minded and getting out of your comfort zone. And I think those are the main things that hinder a lot of progress because a lot of times I see people come here and they stay within a comfort zone. They're a familiar group of friends, they're familiar countrymen. And, and that's not wrong. You know, you, 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 people are different and, you know, comfortable with certain things. But I think for me, just getting right into it, going for football games, going for different events, you know, going and uh, mixing with different kinds of people from different walks of life, right? I think that that was the main thing for me. And, and to top it all, just being open-minded because, you know, where we come from, we have that perspective, but now we're here, our perspective is broadened even more, right? Because this is a whole new different world. So just going with that mindset and, and yeah, just being, being more open to everything. Excellent. Any honest and I know Rafa can speak I, four languages, by the way. I'm, I'm a former, I'm, I'm a former ESL teacher of a master's in TESOL. And I think the more interaction that you have with the native speakers in wherever it is that you are, the, the better your spoken English and your listening skills are going to get. Um, you actually, you also have to sort of like the language to learn it. Um, and there are programs at Penn State. And I think, um, um, Anna or yeah, um, um, I think that's doing, William, but I can't tell. When, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is Wenji still doing the conversation mm -hmm. partner program? Yes. Okay, so there's a conversation partner program where they will match you with an international with a domestic student and an American student. And so you do activities together and you can and practice your English. Cause I, you know, and I and I do think, I do think um, um, Hanging out with people from the same country is great. It, it is a it is a great um, comfort to you, and it provides um, it you know provides a little bit of home for everybody. But you also have to break out of that. Have to make friends outside of that group, um, and so you have to have friends from everywhere. And I and I think that's important. And then I will just also say that there is a program called Epic. And um, in applied linguistics, and they do have workshops all year on 
networking on on pronunciation on small talk um on all, you know how to interview best english pronunciation i mean all of those things are available and they do workshops every week and so um take advantage of those as um yvonne said there are resources here just sort of have to know about them and find them thank you masumi and Iren, i saw you want to add on um, I think the only thing I, I want to add on that is understand language as a tool, okay? Um, you know, we might have access, might not be as good as a native speaker, but it's a tool. We can speak multiple languages, right? There's a lot of people out there that can only speak one. So be proud of that. And be thick-skinned. <laughs> For me, I just really didn't care, whatever. Like, <laughs> just roll with it. Yeah, and remember, people are empathetic. They understand if you like, even if you're nervous about like talking to them, just be like, you know, I'm a little bit nervous because it's not my first language and they'll understand. Um, yeah, I feel like everyone here, especially because it's a global campus, they're open to people from other places and they're also interested in meeting people from other countries. So yeah, like you can yeah. live with that. I remember I forgot the slogan, whatever it is. When you hear somebody speak with accent, you would think this person was actually using second language to speak to me. Oh, that's amazing to me. By the way, we have siblings here of our student alum. To me is sister of Timmy. Uh, to me was my global ambassador, now is senior here. You I'm so happy spot. to see you. I want to give you a hug. But anyway, Nelson, stand up. Nelson is younger brother of Rafa. So we have two younger siblings um, of our alum. It's good word of mouth, right? So it's so, in so encouraging every time when I see sibling of our students coming back to Penn State. So we have a Penn State family here. <laughs> so amazing. All right. Um, more questions from, okay, good. Go ahead. Then you, then you. Okay. Yeah. And then you. Okay. Yeah, uh, he went the other he way. The other way. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Then we go that one. <laughs> you cannot see on the back. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Uh, so hi. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you for taking out your time. Um, thankful. Uh, so uh, one of my primary career interests. Uh, your name? Uh, my name is Anish. Uh, yeah. Uh, one of my primary career interests is uh, relatively new in the field that I am in. So uh, because of that, uh, there are less, uh, you know, uh, big companies. The more of them are startups and small companies. So according to your experiences, uh, do you think uh, like as an international student, I should first aim for a bigger company and then move on to the startups? Or should I just uh, pursue it according to, you know, uh, like, what do you think? I, I just wanted to know that. Go ahead, Rafa. Difficult question. Yeah, like, uh, just your opinion. Yeah. I just want your opinion. Difficult question because, and, and I think it goes back to the visa. I, it is a difficult question because you're going to say, hey, I really want to work for that smaller company. Exactly. I have another brother who has the same scenario. He wanted to work for a startup because that's what he's interested in because that's what he was doing at his college. But then all of the startups would be, I don't have, he, what? You verify, I don't have something that I can actually apply for your H-1B. We don't have the lawyers. We don't have something that we can actually support you. He had to find another company that could support the H-1B green card so that after that, he could potentially go to a startup. So it's a very tricky question that I couldn't tell you. I couldn't do a startup. And I actually found a, my first company that I worked for. It was not a startup. It was a bigger company, but after a year, after I finished my first OPP, they said, we can't even extend you. That's when I had to find, you know, the role of Lenovo because Lenovo had capability of doing the STEM OPT. So I don't know if anyone else here would have any other comments, but it's a tricky question. Brendan, go ahead. Yeah, I think um, I can start speaking to this because I've been through the visa hurdles. I mean, I went to Canada, um, we had my firm, I came back. So I can tell you it depends on how much security you want. If you want to, if you're a risk taker, sure, you can YOLO it, you know, get, get, get a, the IPO, you know, get people to apply, like apply for a green card, get the best lawyers, you can do that. But if you want like a safe route where there's big firms and big firms, mind you, they have a lot of power when it comes to, you know, immigration and visa. So you can go with that depending on your risk appetite, I suppose. Thank you. Anybody else want to add on this? Oh, okay, go ahead. I, I live in Startup Central. I live in the Bay Area, so it's like Startup Central. 
um, startups are great for experience. Very great. I have a couple of friends who work in small startups, 30 people, six people. Great for experience, especially if you're in a New York field. But as you said, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's also risky, right? But I love startups, depending on where they are, if they're in like the seed phase, depending on where they are, it's very risky, especially as an international student. Big companies, they have everything figured out, right? You don't have to go through, oh, what do I do for my OPT? They already know step by step. They have a law firm. They have everything. If you're willing to take that risk of finding your, your own, um, what's it called? Figuring out how to stay here, like finding your own lawyers, all of that, a startup might work. There are some small startups who would do that. So you have to do the research too, because some startups have a lot of funding and, they, and they're willing. Some startups also are like, um, they work with bigger companies. So that's something else that you can look for. A startup that has just been recently acquired, right? By a bigger company. So they have resources, but they still have that startup um, culture. And Oracle does that with some other, they acquire some other companies. So you can look for that. It might not necessarily be as risky <laughs> as going to a startup itself, but I know startups are fun, but good luck. <laughs> Okay, so we have a question here, then you, yeah, so first. Oh, actually, go ahead, yes. So my name is Hamza, and I just wanted to add a point to the, um, I had a friend who graduated from Penn State and he started his own project um, in Pittsburgh. So it's a startup, but like um, low services has been utilizing um, the low services provided by Penn State. I think everyone who is in their OBT still enjoys the um, services of Penn but State. Do some research, it all depends too, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I like how you here with all the questions to come. That's amazing. Hi, um, I just have another question. I wanted to ask about how as an international student can get involved. So I just transferred from the Brandywine campus to UP during COVID. And um, this is like my first semester here, but I never really meet any international students. And I heard it a lot that Penn State has many resources, but no one ever says how to find resources or what, like how to meet other international students. Okay, so your university, you also transitioned from Brandywine to University Park. We have quite a few, two plus two here from Harrisburg to University Park. You just found the person that's going to connect you with everyone. <laughs> yeah, I will connect there you. There you go. Sure. In the right place. And I, my colleague William's there and Yvonne, you know, we can all help you get connected. But in the meanwhile, I like two plus two students to share how you adjust from a small campus, like a family, right, to this gigantic <laughs> campus. How do you adjust and do well here? Go ahead. So I can speak to this. Uh, I was in Penn State Harrisburg for two years and I transferred over. I mean, not during COVID. I think that's a lot like a different scenario. So just mind you, but um, I think as what you're doing right now and what, as what I mentioned earlier, you know, reach out to whoever who is organizing events like Anna is a great resource. Um, go on to campus. There's many fairs, right? They come out. It might not be the fair that you're looking for, but it's a lead where they can introduce you to people, to people and eventually find what you want. Like I think for me, I was, you know, when I first came in, I was a business major. I was trying to rush for business fraternities. I was trying to do all sorts of things, right? But like, it just didn't stick. But I think through meeting those people and building opportunities upon that, I stumbled upon the consulting club that uh, led me to my career today. So just something. To stop. And I want to add about also make connection with local community. I know uh, my colleague Wenjie, for example, also uh, helps students connect with community go to practice English and doing apple picking. And I know a lot of campus, Brandywine, Harrisburg, we have a lot of community connection programs. So find out more, come to Bookie. We have, you know, um, Bookie has the International Students for Services. My colleague Richard has a lot of events from CEO office. So check it out. And also sign up for Global Gazette. That is the newsletter. You'll get updated information about student events. Um, for example, this event was promoted on Global Gazette too. All right. Yeah. Um, is this nationality? I would out. Athletic. 
not bark. Social clubs, academic. I would start probably with I were national. Oh, Yumi, you have a question. Go ahead. Oh, I'll add to that because you're a two plus two student yeah, too. Yeah, we have somebody want to add to that. Go ahead. Say louder. Oh, question. Go ahead. Uh, I have a question relating to my major. Uh, so I study cybersecurity uh, at the College of IST. Um, I know that cybersecurity jobs are very thought of right, right now, but uh, as an international student, well, well, basically, I'm not American. It will, it, will it be hard for me to find a job here? Because um, my major deals with a lot of sensitive information about the company. That's a That's good a question. question. I can, uh, you, know, you go ahead and I'll answer from my lucky modern perspective. Sure. Um, yeah, when you talk about cybersecurity, uh, my old company is Lucky Martin. Before 911, I was able to get a job as an international student. After 911 has to be citizen. So your area, you might, you might be having difficulty getting those type of jobs as an international student. However, again, the global market, you might be able to work for other country or for, you know, so but there are definitely going to have some barriers for that area um, because a lot of jobs need highest classified clearance. <laughs> so before 911 is a different story after 911. So yeah, you may want to navigate and again, check it out. If you are willing to do global jobs and working in different countries, you might have more options. So uh, cybersecurity can be difficult to get a job right here in the United States during this time. It's not easy. Unless uh, you want to also want to add something. Trust me, I didn't. No, you good? Okay. Yeah, but keep learning, you know, all the skills you learn can, you will find your place. Oh. Well, I will, I will yeah. add one thing. It really depends on the company and if they have any U.S. government contracts and defense contracts. So, I mean, you can probably find a company that's not, that doesn't have those kinds of contracts. I, I don't know enough about your field, so I'm really the wrong person yeah. to advise. Yeah, your industry a lot of times they be working with government too, so it can. Yeah, I work for a Chinese-based company, uh, but we are both headquartered in the U.S. and China. So Lenovo is China-based, born or was founded in 1984. But now we have two different business units. One is headquartered in Beijing, and the other one is in Bali. Uh, and we do a lot of work that not necessarily is related to the government of the U.S. We actually, because we bought from IBM, we lost a lot of contracts from IBM because we are a Chinese-based company. Even though we are global today and we have two headquarters, we're still considered at some degree of, you know, our CEO is from China and a lot of our senior management team. But a lot of cybersecurity jobs are still in Raleigh because one of our server business are here and we work with different governments. We yesterday just launched the biggest supercomputer in, in, in the Netherlands. And we work with a lot of the government from Netherlands and Europe. So we do have cybersecurity jobs. It's not going to be necessarily cybersecurity in the same sense that you may think that you're going to be probably doing firmware or software for cybersecurity, but there's uh, jobs within, you know, not only Lenovo, but other companies as well that they are based here in the U.S. that they don't have military contracts or U.S. based. Yeah, so they have global business, perhaps working with European company or Lenovo is a Chinese business working globally, may not, you know, focus on American government stuff contracts. So, so you still have a lot of 
uh, have to walk, navigate to find out the right place, kind of. Um, I know Anna, I, was, Anna, I have something to add. Oh, go ahead. So I think um, you mentioned that you know you there's like data issues with your major, I assume. But I think um, you could also think of it as what you learned as a skill set, because I know that aside from very technical or data sensitive industries, you could also try other firms like consulting firms, where I know that for my firm, for example, we have cybersecurity service line, right? Where we specifically use cybersecurity knowledge to consult clients that might not necessarily be government based clients, right? It could be private and other private companies. So that, that could be other avenues to look at aside from just focusing on, you know, the very technical, you know, private sort of data science or, I mean, um, cybersecurity roles. Yeah, a lot of skills translated to a new field also building your skill right match. And, okay. Right. Hi, um, I also have a question about a major. So I'm an engineer and I'm looking like for opportunity in manufacturing. But this side is like, it's more close up and then they don't really mark up to a huge base of students. Um, I wonder if any of you like have any experience with that. Like for big company like Dow and like some company, they, they don't really uh, support uh, international students. So I'm trying to look into like expand my, my search. I've tried Nittany Lion, Korea Fair is a good source, but mostly around this area. I want to look more like beyond that. So I wonder if you guys have experience in this one. I can, yeah, I can tell you a little bit about that. Like the company I'm working right now is like technically very small. And the reason is when I was applying, I had, I, I found the same problem as you were. Like even when I was, um, uh, I, I was like, I will qualify for a job. They will tell me a lot of times if there's an American that has the same qualifications, we are by, you know, by the law, we have to pick them. So I started searching a lot of small, smaller companies and that's how I got my job. Like I found a small company with less applicants than usually like the big companies that they have. And they thought that was the best, you know, option for them. And that's how I, they sponsored, sponsored me. So yeah, small, like looking for small companies, like less than 60 people or even less than hundred people. That's always a good option, especially for engineers because there are so many of us. Uh, Maria, did you find a job from our network too? Ryan? I found a job through LinkedIn. Okay, so remember, okay, also check on that too. <laughs> Uh, like uh, Rafa mentioned, like a company name, or um, like I said, if, I don't know if you were in the presentation, um, but like if you go to LinkedIn or also LinkedIn is a good source of like finding jobs, so you can find job like through your major through the industry. You can just type in what kind of job you're looking for. And you're going to get so many options right there. There's also the career, the Lion Careers, that that's a Penn State source that they have. Same thing by your industry, by your major, you type down and you're going to get a big list of companies that are offering those kinds of, that, that's very, like a good place to start looking for. So. I'm a coach. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the oil industry and and those areas um can, there are so many jobs for engineers out there like so you just have to like look for them and again like there's so many small companies too like that are working for, with chemical engineers so there's definitely the job out there you just have to do like a little research and you know put the work in you know, find those companies and you can look for penn state alumni and that have studied um your major and see where they work that's another example Yeah, so, um, excuse me, Anna, I was just going to ask everyone, how, how did they got their jobs? She said she got her job from LinkedIn, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I had a lot. Um, yeah, basically, through I applied to many jobs when I was looking for them. And that's experience, I feel like, from a lot of international students, just trying to get an opportunity. And something came up through LinkedIn, and I got my interview, and I, that's the job I have right now. How about Rafa? Uh, I, the first job that I got straight out of college. And the actual global supply chain rotational group I found through. So after a year that I was already working, 
were after nine months that I was had a connection to Lion, and that's how I found out that Lenovo was doing addition of world and I applied for it. But through the process of finishing school until I got the final job national student, I applied for it. Wow, two hundred jobs average. Um, for me, my first job, what I found was from the career fair here at State College. Um, and then from there, I got recruited from LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is your friend. Um, for me, it was also the career fair. Um, I know they talked about career fair. Something very important when you go to a career fair is also know what you want to apply for. Don't just go there and be like, hey. I see your company. Be like, I, I saw this particular job because, and I think it's a good fit for me because insert whatever your qualifications are. Because if you don't do that, they'll give you a QR code and tell you to go home. <laughs> so um, yeah, career fair. And also don't be discouraged because some of the career fairs, you go home and they'll still call you back. And I think the Nittany Lion, uh, what's it called? The Nittany Lion Career Network is a smaller set of applicants, right, than if you're applying to the company directly. So more advantage. I think for me, it was pretty simple. It was a smear connect for those business students out there. Um, I just applied, I think filtered my preferences and be very specific with what I was looking for. And I applied and got an interview. And I think it's just, it connects you really well and, and just know what you want and uh, be very specific. So much, you know, networks, connections, alumni association, just, Keep trying and grow the net wide. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, you will. I will say, being sorry, Anna. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Like, do as much as you can. Like, just being an international student, we already gonna, it's gonna be harder for us just to find a job. So, whatever opportunity you get to put your word in, put, put your resume in, do it. Like Rafa said, he applied like 200 jobs. I did the same thing. It's like I was sending my resume everywhere I could. I was talking to everyone that wanted to hear me talk. <laughs> and yeah, and something came up like that. Don't don't be discouraged. I tell I told Anna today that when I, when I was I talked to Oracle employee um, um, recruiters in different places and somebody told me you're not a comp sci major, um, you don't fit for this job. And the next day I got an interview from another Oracle. <laughs> so don't be discouraged. Sometimes things are like that are subjective. Just keep applying. Yeah, and you're gonna hear no like lots of times. So just be like, okay, cool, and then move on. <laughs> keep trying. Yeah, I mean just to add to that, right? What we gave was the short story but there was a long story behind it where <laughs> there was a lot of rejection a lot of uncertainty but i think the most important part is just keep pushing and and don't give up right i think as international students we have an extra hurdle but that doesn't mean we need to stop and always still continue so true so keep trying and give up yeah go ahead sorry but i don't really have a question i just thought of an information that i thought might be useful to other people so because he said that um your LinkedIn profile picture should be professional. And mine is a picture of me in front of the White House like this. So um, <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to let everyone know that the Career Center does take professional headshots for free on Fridays and Tuesdays. Thank you. That's important. Friday and Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, make a phone call, email, and check it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. back there. Has, has been amazing. You guys are answering so many questions. <laughs> uh, hi. Oh. I'd just like to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Pietro. I'm an international student from Brazil. I'm a sophomore. And I, yeah, from Brazil. I'm Nelson's friend. Oh. And I, I would like to know, like, in the beginning of your college career, what type of internship did you guys look for? Because, like, as a sophomore, I don't have, like, much experience in my area. I'm a science major, the corporate innovation entrepreneurship. So, like, in the beginning, like, what do you guys look for? Like, I know it's kind of hard to, like, land an internship in a big-time company. So, like, I would have to know, like, where did you guys intern in the beginning? Every experience is good experience. My internship, my first internship was in a very small company doing sales. And it was, I didn't like sales. Um, <laughs> and I leveraged this to my next internship and then my next job. Um, as they said, apply for a lot of things. If you, if there are college specific programs, um, rotational programs for college students, apply to those versus just um, throwing your net into everything. 
But honestly, every experience, one of my first jobs here was working with Anna as a student worker. Your, that's, that's experience that you can use. Your experience with clubs, also experience. My first resume was just filled with clubs. Just a whole bunch of clubs. I did this at this and quantify your experience in clubs. So even though you might not have as a sophomore, you might not have exactly prof professional experience, your club work, your class, your classes that you've taken. The when I was applying for Oracle, that's something, something, someone, something big that someone told me. Put all the classes you've taken. Don't write, I don't know, ComSci 221. Nobody knows what that is, right? I took database, da -da 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 -da, keywords, because the applicant tracking system still picked those up too. But I'm rambling. Everything is good experience. Use your clubs as experience as well. If you get internship, it might not be the best one and you might not, it might not be the one you want, but that's offer tickets. That's my advice. I think what I can recommend is applying to a big brand companies. I mean, not just because um, of the brand, but also the work they do is, is uh, more generalist and more recognizable in, in a lot of ways in terms of where you go out to speak to a lot of people, they recognize the company and what they do. Um, and I think also to get to that, obviously, you know, for example, for me, um, uh, my first internship was City, but also back home in Malaysia. So I think the entry was easier than, even though it was back home, it was still a recognizable brand. And I think uh, how I got it is just, again, as what we were talking about, just being involved on campus. I think showing initiative and showing that you're more than just your GPA, I think that, that, that helps a lot. So important when you look for jobs, your internship experience. Actually, when I, I remember for Lockheed Martin third interview, I brought a thank you letter from my internship working for Syracuse language system before I left. It gave me beautiful thank you letter with all this, uh, everybody write something. So for my last interview, I say yes. <laughs> and they, they were quite impressed. All the, you know, they talk about how I brought food sometimes and how I, you know, connect with um, do some events anyway. So your internship and brag about it, like uh, Rafa said, you know, don't be uh, too shy and you have to, a lot of times our internationals, you come from a culture where you're told to be humble and to not brag, let other people praise you kind of, you know, but here, if you don't brag about yourself, you don't uh, market yourself and nobody know your achievement. Nobody will check on you and think from your perspective. So you have to be your advocate and uh, when you look for jobs. Transferable skills. So what kind of skills are you taking from a club to a job? What kind of skills you're taking from an internship to a job? And that could be a lot of things so uh, you can relate. If you're coaching someone, you're coaching kids, or that's something that you were doing as a, a teenager, you were a lifeguard and you're you know, taking care of kids and coaching, what kind of transfer do you take that into something that is you know, adapting to an internship? Right? So telling, explaining something to kids, sometimes you're going to see at work that you're going to be explaining the same way that you're explaining to kids. Right, depending on what subject you're talking on, same way they're going to be explaining. So that are transferable skills. You just need to recognize which ones you can transfer from something you did before or something you do at a club to when you're finding an internship and a job. Yeah, and also like um, Tammy said, if you feel like you don't have enough like experience in your career right now, you're like in the right place to find it. Like I bet I bet money on it that there's like a business club in Penn State that you can join, and then. Everything you're learning there, like Rafa said, is transferable. So you can just put that experience in your resume and highlight that. Right, let's see time. If we have time for one more question, not three more minutes, perhaps one more question. If not, I'm gonna give my panelists a little five minutes break because our maintenance crew gonna come in to remove everything, then they will bring cocktail tables. So you get to come close and uh, to in continue engaging with our alum uh, to do informational kind of uh, networking and so just more informal to um, our networking mixer. <laughs> uh, so um, five minutes break, we'll be back. Um, so, and then you guys get a break. And then afterwards, um, they'll still unmove the stuff. So if you wanna stay right here. 
Thank you. You didn't expect John to stay for this. Oh, okay. This time. Okay. Hey, let me just think. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. No, I have experience. Thank you for coming. I'm here. <laughs> We're going to see it. Good. I think so. It's the question. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of these things. Yeah. 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 Yeah.